Welcome back, y'all. It's Serene Queen TV. I've got more content. Let's talk. So thank you for everybody that has been watching the video, subscribing, commenting, liking. I love the discussion. I got a few people riled up, but I like that. You know, I like when I get the people talking. I don't because I don't mind, you know, your opinion. Like I may not. I don't know everything, you know, like. I'm not always right. It's just an opinion. It's not facts. Like, nothing that I'm saying, like, all this stuff that I've done on this channel has all been, is commentary, is opinion. Like, it's not law, and you have the right to challenge it. When I put my videos in, I put the setting, allow all comments. I don't screen certain offensive comments before I let them post. I let, just say what you have to say, because... If I can get on here and talk my shit, then you can get on my, you can get in my comments and respond and give your perspective, whether I like it or not. So that's the type of energy I like. But today I'm coming back to talk about Ken the man and Megan Thee Stallion because I just did some more research on this situation. I have a few more follow-up videos for some of those opinion pieces that I just uploaded on like what's really going on with some of these people. Um, more into their story, why some of them are popping off more than others. And I did some research into Ken the Man. So Ken the Man is also from Houston, Texas, like Megan Thee Stallion. And once I found that out, I was like, hmm, you know, that makes sense. That's what happened to her. Like, because I just really haven't, like, heard of her or, like, well, just lately, you know what I mean? Like, she's not really in the conversation. Um... I, I'm, I feel like people who, you know, go to like hookah bars and clubs a lot, you probably are familiar with, you know what I'm saying, some of her music, but, um, but like, you know, do you, do you, have you heard of like her shit lately? And do you actively stream her music? Like she, we don't really hear about her on like the top streamed people or whatever, and that's okay because she's a new artist and like she's still pretty underground. She's had like some mainstream success and some people are like just going to be hometown artists. Like not everybody can be a national artist, but I just want to, again, kind of give more backstory and more info and what I think is really going on. And to be honest with Ken the Man, I think what's really going on with her career is that she's just not that original and that... Megan had a better team, better music, more bars, um, and then that is, like, really what has, like, catapulted her. Um, let me see. Like, okay, they're both from Houston, too, and, like, Megan got with a good team early on. Like, she got with 1501 pretty early on, then, like, from there, she... Um, like even before we knew who she was, Megan was auditioning for Love and Hip Hop. Glad she passed on that. Um, she just had a buzz kind of from her campus. You know, she is good looking. Um, so it's easy for, for people to want to like fuck with her. And her, she did have her mom there too, like giving her, you know, that direction. And like she was saying, me and my mama were just rolling around Houston, just figuring out what we were going to do to push my music. Like Megan was doing fashion shows. She really had her mom there to like give her like some career direction. I don't really know who Ken the man has behind her. She says she has a manager um, according to her Instagram page, but signing to 1501, signing to a small label early on really helped Megan a lot. Because that's what helped her get her deal with 300, which eventually helped her get involved with Rock Nation. Just in my opinion, because, and kind of from what I know, because 300 Entertainment is owned by Kevin Lyles and Lior Cohen, who are like really good friends with Jay-Z, like, that's but see they already I think have her in like a recording deal at 300 but she's in a management deal at Rock Nation and of course Jay-Z like wants to put her in a recording deal because that's where the big dough is but 
I'm looking on Apple Music to see like when Megan like first started. So Megan dropped uh, her first mixtape in 2017. With Ken the Man, she dropped a single in 2017 that didn't make any waves. Um, so, but the Make It Hot mixtape, you know what I'm saying? It was a whole, it's a whole body of work, a cohesive body of work. It's an EP, seven songs. And, like, full songs, too. Like, not two-minute songs. You know, like, full... You know, the shortest song on here is two minutes and 48 seconds. The longest song on here is four minutes even. So, a healthy body of work. Seven songs over 20 minutes. And um, do with different sounds. Like, Megan's early music is good. That's, that's the truth. Her music lately has kind of expired. I don't know. It's just become so commercial. But her old music was there. She had the bar. She has talent. And that's the difference between her and Ken the Man in my, in my um, understanding. Because, for my opinion. Because I just listened to a few more of Ken the Man's songs. Because I really wanted to give her a chance. I really liked Not My Nigga. So, and I, I felt like it was like a really good song. I felt like she had some, you know, just, I liked the, the lyrics. Like, and I felt like, you know, was it really full of bars? I don't, not that I could really... I wouldn't say so, but I thought it was a good song. And it's more lyrically inclined than most these days. A lot of these days, people just find a decent hook and just repeat that shit to the end over over a fire-ass beat. But I like Not My Nigga. I felt like she kind of told a little bit of a story. Like, it was something you could really relate to. Um, you know, so I just wanted to listen to more of her music to give her more of a chance. And I wasn't impressed, unfortunately. Like, I wanted to be, but I wasn't. And she doesn't really have that much music. I know making music is expensive. And that if she's independent, that it can definitely play a huge part in why um, she doesn't have more music out. Because that's why it was so easy. Looking, looking at it, it's like, what happened to Ken the Man, Megan Thee Stallion? Because Megan has teams behind her, you know, she has 1501, 300, and Rock Nation. Like, that's part of why, to a certain extent, you know, she's very controlled, um, big puppet energy, but that's why she's a much bigger artist, because she's got forces behind her, money behind her to pay for recording. That's why I never really did like when Megan talked against Carl, because it's like Megan... You know, Carl is not like Jay-Z. Carl had an actual legitimate career before he went into music. You know, he was a, a baseball player, a very successful baseball player. And baseball players have a lot of money. Like, they, they're a lot of times, most of the time, well more financially well off than, or much more financially well off than NBA players and NFL players. So... He has real money. He's not a street hustler like Sean Carter. And um, that is just the truth. You can't dispute that. Um, and Carl really did put money up on her, a lot of money into her as an early artist. He really did take faith in her, take a lot of, he took, yeah, what, faith, had faith in her. Really invested in her. He was why she had videos and a good look, you know, Wigs, lashes, nails from the beginning. Good production from the beginning. He, so Megan has to just give him that credit. Because Ken the Man didn't have that. And look at where she is. Um, so just saying, just saying. Like, I'm just calling out the truth. So Ken the Man didn't make a mixtape until, like, 2020. She had a hit, at the, like, in 2019 time with this song called He Be Like. I listened to it. I wasn't feeling it. it was way too sexual. Not no bars, just moaning over a beat, like not feeling it. Um, the last time she had a mixtape was what 2021 because it's been like two years now. She dropped a song today, actually, like, and I heard it. And she dropped a song with another female rapper. I'm glad they collabed. She dropped a song with Connie Diamond, but. Yeah, the last mixtape Ken the Man dropped was in 2021. So it's been two years. But she dropped a song today with Connie Diamond, and I really wasn't feeling it. When I looked at, when I went to do some research into Connie Diamond, first of all, I was like, this is a woman, but it sounds like a man. 
I hate to say that. But then I went to go look at a video of her and people in the comments were hyping her up. But I just thought she looked very comical, very gimmicky. I really bust out laughing. And I hate that I had that reaction. But because I, I just I want to like these people. But <laughs> I want to root for them. But you got to give me something to clap for. Um... <laughs> Not something to slap my knees for. <laughs> it just, you know, I don't know. It just really wasn't hitting on shit. So with Ken the man, here, here's why she really doesn't rack up against Megan, okay? Both of them, they have too much in common. There's not enough differentiality or not enough things to separate them as artists. And Megan has more butt. So Megan has the edge up because she has more of a team and better bars. She can rap better than Ken the Man. Um, so it, whether the music is stale now or, or what, the delivery is better, the raps are better, and the team is much bigger. So done. Meg, Ken the Man stands no chance. But when it comes to what they have in common and another reason why she has no chance, because, again, there can only be one. Heavily sampled music. I'm so tired of it. Um, both of them sample way too much fucking music, but that's a part of the industry's agenda. Highly sexual music. So fucking tired of it. A part of the industry's agenda. Um, a lot of Kid in the Man's music has, has referrals to 304s. And it's just like, why are you pushing prostitution so blatantly, so open? Like that is so toxic and dangerous. Um, I, she is... And, and see you ladies and, and people, period, who are listening. This is why you don't sell your soul. Because you sell your soul for what? You sell your soul for what? For a double cheeseburger? Like, at the, at the end of it, like, you, you will regret it. Because it's just like, so, so Ken the Man, you, you pushing all of this sexual music and you're still not on top. So what are you doing it for? I don't know. You know, I just, I guess some, she has to ask herself that. But highly sexual music, pushing prostitution, I don't like it. Southern, they both have a Southern accent. They both have like that Houston, Texas, you know, accent. So they naturally just, they sound alike. They have the exact same song content. They're both talking about how they use and dispose of men. I just don't like that. I don't like that agenda from men or women. The uh, the abuse and misuse and disposal of um the opposite sex. Like I don't like that. Um cuz it's not healthy and it's part of why I keep having to be attacked every day with fucking red pill and pink pill and black pills and all these i wish you bitches would overdose on some pills stop fucking making that dumbass content about dumbass relationships fucking read a book like go do something learn how to fucking sew hate you hoes like i'm sick of that bullshit this type of fucking music is subliminally programming people and it's why i can't fucking enjoy twitter because I'm being harassed by this stupid ass relationship bullshit. And it can't even barely enjoy fucking YouTube either because you hoes keep making videos. I'm tired. Um, and they look similar. You know, wigs, lashes, nails. Megan, Megan and Ken the Man look alike. Like, you know, well, no, but you know what I mean? Just aesthetically, the rap girl aesthetic. Nails, wigs, lashes, like the fucking edges, the baby hairs, the butts. You know, they're both brown. Like, they look alike. They look similar. Like, they don't look dif different enough to be pushed. And like I was saying, in the end, um, pushing the same agenda. Oh, yeah. And then they both have male-centric rap names or, like, male-leaning rap names. Like, Ken the Man. I was like, is she a transgender? You know? Like, and it's fine if he or she is. But I'm just saying, like... You're, you present as a woman, but your name is Ken the Man. That's strange. Just like Megan Thee Stallion. Like, a stallion is a male horse, but she's a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, peep the subliminal programming. Peep the agenda pushing. The Illuminati invests a lot of money and time into 
pushing the subliminal agenda that black women are masculine, especially darker skinned black women. Like, do you know what I mean? Like they like, duh, like, like they have a whole fucking rapper named light skin Keisha. My case is closed. Get out of my courtroom. <laughs> like, come on. But this is just my video about Ken the man, because I, I, I just heard her song, Not My Nigga. This is how, like, divested from this female rap scene I am. A, a chick I knew played this song for me, and I was like, oh, like, I fuck with it. I downloaded it. And I was like, I like this. And I was like, hmm, I wonder where this girl has been. I haven't really heard of her. So I did my research, and I found out. Megan Thee Stallion is what happened to her career. Ken the man, I'm wishing you the best. I think you need to either switch up your whole flow or you need to leave rap because you're either gonna sell your soul for a cheeseburger or you're gonna leave the rap game and keep your soul and still fucking go be able to eat cheeseburgers without having to have a handler take you to McDonald's. So pick your poison, but either way, may God be with you. Y'all have a great day. Comment below how y'all feel about this conversation and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.